Hello and greetings. Welcome to this virtual conversation presented by the Columbia University Maison Française and NYU's Institute of French Studies. We are really delighted to welcome back to the Maison Française in virtual form, at least Klaus Drexel. Um, we met a couple of months ago and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, thank you so much for agreeing to join us today to talk about your film Au, Au Bord du Monde, On the Edge of the World. Um, I want to welcome everyone who's joining us today for this conversation and let you know that if you haven't yet seen the film, it will, we, we're making it available online through the Maison Française website through February 6th. So you could just go onto our website, RSVP, and you'll be sent a link to, um, to watch it um, at home. And it, it's in French with English subtitles. I wanted to let you know that we are going to be talking for about an hour and we will save 10 minutes or 15 minutes or so at the end of the hour for questions from the audience. So if you do have a question, please feel free to use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen at any point to submit it. Um, and then um, we will address as many of the questions as we can at the end of the hour. I also wanted to let everyone know that we're recording the conversation and we will be making it available on our website afterwards. So um, I will just briefly introduce our guests and then I will pass the baton to Frédéric Viguier. So Klaus Drexel is um, a French director, actually German born in 1968, but he's made a home in France. He explored different medias before directing his own films, including live performance and photography. And he's directed several feature length films Affaire de Famille in 2008 and Sous les Etoiles de Paris in 2019. In 2013, he released his first feature length documentary, which is the film we're discussing today, Au Bord du Monde, which was given the English title On the Edge of the World. And this was filmed at night over a period of uh, one year. It was selected by ACID, which is France's Association for the Diffusion of Independent Cinema, to be highlighted at Cannes Film Festival and it's won a number of awards. And Klaus has accompanied this film for hundreds of screenings in France and, uh, and around the world. And we, we hope that he'll talk with us a little bit um, about the reception of the film and some of the reactions he's, he's, he's had. So I mentioned earlier that we've, we first met Klaus virtually, unfortunately so far, um, a couple of months ago when we presented his beautiful film, um, Ladies of the Wood, Au Coeur du Bois in French as part of our Maison Française Film Festival focused on the theme of mauvais genre. And that film is similar in many ways to On the Edge of the World um, and, and equally moving. It is a film that portrays a different group of marginalized people in, in Paris, sex workers, many of them transgender people who work as prostitutes in the Bois de Boulogne. And, um, Klaus also directed a documentary shot in a small town in Arizona called America during the 2016 presidential elections. And he's currently at work on a film about Calais. Unfortunately, I don't think any of his previous films are, are available on American platforms yet. Ladies of the Wood is still playing in, um, in cinemas. We hope that it will be available soon. Apparently, if you have a French address, you can watch, um, I think America, but not yet Ladies of the Wood. Yeah. And joining Klaus in conversation is Frédéric Viguier, who's the director of NYU's Institute of French Studies, which is my alma mater. So I'm particularly pleased to, to welcome Frédéric, who's a very dear colleague. Um, he is a sociologist trained in France in the social sciences and history. And he works in particular on the sociology of education and the welfare state. His research interests also include a focus on inequalities in France and the Francophone world, how they're perceived and represented, and the social policies that aim to correct them. He's just published a book recently called La Cause des Pauvres en France, and he spoke with us a, a few months ago about this book, and we have a recording of our conversation on our website if you're interested to, to listen to that. Um, and that book examines public policy responses to poverty within the history of the French welfare state since 1945. He's currently at work on a book that examines the paradoxical persistence of French education in Morocco after independence. And so because of 
Frederick's interest in poverty and social exclusion, and because he's teaching a course this semester on ethnography or ethnographic approaches to doing research on France, we thought that he would be the perfect interlocutor with, um, with Klaus for this discussion today of his film. And so I am going to um, just thank both of you so much for joining us. And I will turn over to Frédéric. I reserve the right to ask one or two questions along the way as well of this wonderful, uh, about this wonderful film. But I am now going to turn over to Frédéric and thank you so much for joining us. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you, uh, Shani. Uh, I must say that, uh, uh, Thank you for, for, for several reasons, but first of all, I'd like to say how, how much your, your programming in terms of uh, cinema and documentary films at the Maison is wonderful. Uh, thanks to La Maison Française of Colombia, I've discovered so many uh, beautiful French uh, documentary films and it's, uh, it's really uh, uh, fantastic uh, to, 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 to have those uh, works made available uh, to us here in New York. Uh, thank you uh, uh, very much uh, uh, for making me discover. I should have uh, discovered it earlier, this beautiful uh, documentary film by uh, Klaus Drexel. Um, it was a really, for someone who, who, like me, has been working on poverty and social exclusion in France, uh, 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 it's been really a, a, a treat to discover uh, uh, this movie. Uh, I think that one of the things that uh, the movie does incredibly well is to uh, give voice uh, uh, to the homeless people themselves and uh, make space uh, uh, for their voices when in fact, uh, you know, quite often they're spoken for. And, uh, uh, you know, the questions asked about me, uh, them are not so much about their daily experiences, their sense, sense of uh, 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 the, the space that surrounds them, the sense of vulnerability, uh, but rather, you know, uh, what is it that led them to the situation where they are and how to uh, 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 get out of that uh, situation, which is, of course, uh, an important public policy conversation, but uh, uh, it sort of uh, obfuscates uh, uh, their experiences. And I think that one of the things that uh, follows your movie does incredibly well is uh, 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 make space to uh, listen to their voices. And so uh, um, uh, uh, I've prepared a, a number of questions to uh, discuss your, your, your work with you, uh, but I'd like to start perhaps with, uh, you know, pretend that we, you know, we were in a, in a real uh, theater and we just, that we just saw uh, uh, the movie and it just ended and that we're, you know, we're, we're, we're left with uh, uh, Puccini, <laughs> which is the, uh, the, the music concluding the movie. And uh, I'd like to, to talk about the, the things that probably resonate uh, as soon as we're done watching the movie, it's your aesthetic choices. And so speaking of music, you start, if I'm not mistaken, with, uh, with uh, Wagner uh, and finish with Puccini. Um, uh, I must say, despite the beauty that I was a little concerned uh, uh, during the first minutes of watching the, the documentary, I was wondering if you were going to romanticize uh, homelessness. And then I was won over. Uh, 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 but so I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, and for reasons that, uh, that we can discuss later, I was won over because I think you know, the beauty of Paris is something that that matters to the lives of the people you've uh, you've interviewed, but I wanted to ask you about this this choice uh, uh, um, and whether you you feared that it would look like you you're romanticizing and how you decided to uh, uh, go with it nonetheless. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you very much, Shani and Federic, for making this happen. It's really a great pleasure and honor, and thank you for all the people who watched the film and who are listening to, uh, to us now. Uh, of course, it's sad that we can't be in the same room. It's always better, but it's the modern way of communicating, I, I guess. Uh, well, yes, of course, the, 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 how do you make a, a, this kind of film look like? That's a very important question, and uh, um, there's so many answers and uh, and I think most of them I'm not even aware of because uh, I think often when you make it the choice of how you want to uh, to show a film uh, many choices are probably unconscious it's just the way you feel and you see and you sense uh, what, what you're seeing uh, 
But what was really important for me, I think, are two things. It's first of all, I wanted to to show the incredible contrast between the beauty of, of Paris and the richness of the city. Uh, it's like a uh, yeah, like a like a, like a jewel case somehow, you know, the city, and the, well, the contrast with the situation of these people. That was one thing, and uh, the other thing uh, that was important to me is also. Uh, what yeah, the one thing that's contrasting the other thing is is to to make a beautiful setting around these people because because I think they deserve it also, and I think uh, we take it for granted if we make a film about uh, princes or rich people to show them with a beautiful image, and I don't see why uh, these human beings which have the same value than like princes or whatever uh, shouldn't be filmed in a in a beautiful setting, and. Um, I have absolutely no judgment uh, about uh, how other people make films and, and there's no, not a better way than others to make a film. But I think that we, maybe we got used uh, to the fact that films about poor people, usually you don't have much money to make it. So you say, okay, I don't have much money. So I grab my camera, make it handheld, which is, which is fine. But I think that this gave some, us somehow the idea that this is how these people should be filmed. And, uh, and I don't think it's a bad way, but I, I think it's, it's uh, to me, it's shocking to say that uh, you, you should, couldn't also film them in a beautiful way, you know, and that, uh, that was really important. And uh, what's very important for me also is that this is the first uh, documentary I directed. And since then I've always worked with uh, Sylvain Lézère, the same photographer who is director of photography in a film, but he is a stills photographer, uh, first of all. And um, when I discovered the, the, the pictures he's taken of, uh, because he had worked already with homeless people in, uh, in Paris, and, and his photos were exactly what I met, what I had in mind for this film. Um, this frontal uh, photography uh, with, with incredible, beautiful images, but uh, it, it was never to aestheticize. I don't know if you say this in English, but to, to, to to the, the the situation of the people. It's just they were just uh, made magnificent, and that's what I really uh, that was important for me. And uh, to mention the music, um, I can give you a, a, an uh, an explanation for that. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, if it came if the explanation came after my choice or if the choice. But the thing is that uh, in at the end of the nineteenth century. Le Baron Haussmann, he's a famous guy, he, he redesigned Paris. He, he designed, for the people who know Paris, now we have the, the, the Grand Boulevard, the big avenues, and, 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 and Haussmann redesigned Paris at the time um, to make it uh, also to, it, it was easy to, to control the population because they couldn't hide in the little streets and it was easier to circulate. And, and he also, um, uh, evacuated the, the poor people from, from the city by the time to build the, the beautiful buildings. And by the time he said, I want Paris to be as beautiful as an opera setting. So I, I thought it was somehow amusing to start the film as an opera and to bring the, these poor people back in, the, back in town. But of course, uh, we, we didn't bring it back in town. I mean, that's something I want to uh, say also that uh, we, we never moved the people around to put them in a beautiful setting. Uh, we always film all the, pe the people at the exact place where they really live. And so I, I guess um, a, a, a related question could be, do you think that um, uh, uh, the, the people you filmed are sensitive to the, the, the beauty uh, uh, surrounding them, that this uh, perception of, uh, of Paris that, that we have by watching the, the, the movies is also theirs? Uh, maybe, yes. I, I, remember, I remember that uh, uh, Marco, Marco, the guy who lives in the, uh, under the bridge, uh, he's some, some, some kind of aristocrat of, among the homeless people because he has a, he's uh, with a candlelight and also the candlelight, uh, usually he, he, I mean, he doesn't have this place anymore, but he used to have a, a, a power, electricity in his thing. But, but fortunately, the, by pure chance for us, the day when we came, it, it was cut. So we had to put the candles. So it wasn't staged, but, uh, uh, but I mean, he lives on the, on the river, of the, on the banks of the river Seine. And he always told me, look, I have the most beautiful view uh, of this whole city. 
and uh, so he was definitely aware of it all of them i don't know and it's uh it depends always on the person interesting um uh, what makes it particularly beautiful is also your your, your choice to uh, uh film at night uh, that's when the city of lights uh um takes on uh, 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 its beauty, uh, its utmost beauty. And uh, could you tell us about this, uh, this decision to uh, shoot at night, uh, mostly? Yeah, uh, at first, it wasn't, it wasn't there at the absolute beginning. First of all, we thought, well, we'll we could film it day and night. But very, very soon, when we watched the, the, the rushes, the dailies we had, we saw that um, uh, the, the, the images we shot at daytime were a bit common, let's say. And what we shot at night, especially after 1.30 uh, a.m., uh, once that the metro is, is closed, because when the metro is closed, Paris is empty. Uh, and, uh, and we saw, thought that, that there was an incredible ambience, uh, exactly what we were looking for in the first place. But we saw that this ambience, we, we have it when we shoot between uh, let's say 1 a.m. And, and 5 a.m. when the metro doesn't work, and uh, so that's we, and so we decided really soon after the maybe the first week that we will shoot only at night, and then came the idea of those who have seen the film that, uh, uh, that this, they should come maybe at the end. But uh, uh, yes, that, that uh, so it wasn't the first idea, but it came really soon. Um. Speaking, staying on the on the topic of uh, aesthetic choices and how they uh, they uh, structure uh, uh, our perception, what, one of the, uh, the decisions you made uh, is also to put your camera at a respectful distance from them, right? They never shot in in, in close uh, shots. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a there's a there's a distance, and also from from below, as if you know showing. Uh, 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 respect and uh, and humility. Uh, uh, can, you, can you tell us about the, the the process that led you led you to decide? Uh, yeah, to uh, in fact, the whole process is uh, it's it's it came I think organically because uh, I had absolutely no no experience with homeless people before starting the film. Uh, I, I had the I, I wanted to make this film because I I thought that I live in a city where there are so many homeless people around us on the on the sidewalks in the metro but we never know who these people are and um and all that i'd seen on television was uh, uh were social workers who do a great job of course but speaking for the homeless people and and so i really wanted to that's i mean the idea of, talk, of spending a lot of time in talking with these people came even before the idea of making a film out of it so i thought and then i i, I wanted to to go on the streets and meet the people and said, well, I'm a filmmaker. But by then I was just a, um, how do you say, a fiction uh, director. But I thought, okay, I should make a documentary out of it. Uh, and then I asked Sylvain, uh, because I was a bit ill at ease, I didn't know how to, I asked Sylvain who had made photos of these people uh, for a long time. He said, how should, I, should, I, should I go and talk with them? Is it?" Uh, and she said, well, it's, it's really easy. I mean, just go and, and talk. And, and of course, you, when they sit on the, you, when you sit, when they sit on the, on the, on the ground or so, you don't speak from up down, but you, you kneel down. And so you're at the same level. And so naturally we thought that, of course, how we have to, to, to make the, to, to film the, uh, the film. And uh, uh, so we, and so we have this, and also, also it helps to, to film the, uh, the, the monuments in the in, in the background, but the idea was really to be uh, at the same level, a bit a bit below, and uh, always with this idea of um, of making beautiful shots. And uh, the other choice we made from the uh, from the beginning was not to move the camera. In fact, the idea was it was not that we didn't want the camera to move, but we didn't want anything to disturb our discussion. Uh, meaning that uh, we knew that uh, we wanted to make it like like a painting, we have this this frame uh, with the Paris in the in the back backdrop, and uh, since I, I I never have questions in advance, I don't. It's not an interview. Uh, I just come and say, oh hello, how was your day, and then we start talking, and and sometimes we talk for for an hour or two hours, and. Uh, 
So I didn't want to be embarrassed, I mean, embarrassed or annoyed or I have to say with the, with the camera, say, okay, I have to move it, make a close up, etc. So that's why we decided we will not move the camera. And also, I, of course, for feature filmmaking or fiction making, I, I know very well what you can do with the, I don't know how you say it in, in English, but the, what, what we call a raccord dans l'axe is if you have a wide frame and suddenly you make a close up, it's really, it, it creates a shock, it creates emotion. And, and I'm aware, of course, of, of all that, but I thought that in this film, uh, it, it belongs to the people that we film to give us the emotion they want to give. Uh, and, 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 and I think their words, their behavior, their, their silences are, are, are probably strong enough to, and then we don't have to, uh, of course, it's easy to, to, of course, make a close up. You see that the person, uh, cries a little bit or whatever, but uh, we thought that yeah maybe it would be better to to stay at this distance and uh, and yeah all the technical choices come out of this the idea of, of for example uh, you don't Sylvain is very talented with image that's why of course pe people who have a technical knowledge see that it's it's a wide angle but I think that not many people are aware of how wide the angle really is. That means that you can only, so that's why we're really frontal because if we just make a little move, it's, ooh, it's you know, it's, uh, it's a super wide angle, um, not fisheye, but, but almost, uh, almost, you know? And um, so this of course enables us to see, uh, of course, the, the city of Paris really, and also to, to see the, the person, uh, the whole person and, uh, and, and, and it enables me to be not too far away if we have a if I have a long, longer focal length uh, to have this wide shot of the person, I, I should be maybe I have to be maybe I don't know uh, uh, ten meters away or ten yards or, or in, in English. But uh, so well, uh, these uh, these this, uh, the fact that we wanted to be close, wide, etc. Listen for them to them for a long time, uh, be at the same level. All all these uh, what. Uh, uh, these goals, have, uh, in fact, uh, uh, dictated the choices of uh, the little tripod, uh, the wide angle, the very frontal image. And the frontal image also is the idea was to what I hope that works, but that uh, I cannot, uh, it's only the audience who can say if it works. Uh, I, I want somehow uh, to, to that the film starts like a, a face a face, you know, to be in front of the other person. And at some point, <clears throat> I hope that it works, I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> it, it's that, that the screen transforms itself in, in a mirror, that, that, that even if we're, our situation is very different, we, we, we forget about the fact that the people are homeless and we, we see them as, as human beings that they have maybe the same issues than we have and we recognize ourselves in the, in the persons. And uh, this is, that's why also I really like this very, very frontal image. And I'm usually Sylvain sets up the camera and I, I really am close to the to the to the to the lens, so that the uh, so that the the, the gaze uh, is really close to the axis of the of the camera. Yeah, um, uh, and so since you you've uh, you've started re uh, broaching the, the the topic of the relationship you established with uh, with the, the subjects who participate in the movie. Um, and I wanted to, to turn to, to, this, to this dimension, you know, how, how did you manage to create uh, uh, this kind of confidence uh, that is necessary, you know, for, for the kind of, you know, frank, honest, intimate uh, conversations that, that you had with uh, very many of them. And so I'd like to ask you about the, the, the preliminary work that you did to uh, you know, both uh, recruit uh, them or be recruited by them, uh, and um, and um, and establish you know confidence. How how long was it uh, 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 before you started uh, filming, for instance? Well, you know, it's uh, it's there's no rule. It's like a, it's just like human relationships, you know. And um, I'm really fortunate because we talk a lot a lot about. Uh, uh, Sylvain is a uh, work as a cameraman. I, I hope we'll have time to talk about Anne Suryo, who's my editor and whose her contrib contribution to this uh, work is amazing. And, uh, and, and, but also uh, 
uh, a very, very important person or two people are, are my producers, Florent Lacaze and Céline Farmaki. And Florent always said, you must have a camera with you from the first day on. And he was right because, for example, uh, for the people who have seen the film, maybe they remember at the beginning, uh, really at the beginning, we see um, Jenny who walks and in the backdrop, there is the Arc de, Arc de Triomphe with a huge French flag, which I think is a really a political shot that uh, that uh, the situation offered to us, a better chance. Uh, and this was maybe the first day we we went out to film to shoot the film. For the people who see it in excellent quality, they can even notice that we didn't use the same lens. It's a sharper lens than the rest of the film because it was really almost more the the, the essays of uh, the, 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 the prep work, in fact. But um, so yeah, to to and of course Jenny, she was okay that we filmed her that day. Uh, it's uh, and uh, some people they said yes immediately. Some people said, I, "You can come and see us or me uh, as long, as much as you want, and I'm glad to see you, but I don't want to be in the film." So I said, "Okay, no problem." And finally, at the at one moment, they say, "Oh, uh, I'm okay," and it really depends. Uh, but um, the the idea so. The important thing to say is that we didn't make any prep work at all. I just made a little bit of uh, uh, one or two tournées, uh, you know, with uh, with the Samu Social, which are, is a, it's a team of social workers, but not much. And and the idea was really the three of us: Sylvain, Nicolas Basselin, my, my sound guy, and myself. Just at night, we had our backpacks and walked through Paris, and we saw and we saw a person, and we said, "Oh, hello." Uh, uh, first thing we always asked was, uh, "Can we do anything to help you?" And uh, and after that, the second thing was always to say, "Okay, we're here to make a film," because uh, for me, it's always very important that the people I film that they are happy to be in the film, that they don't feel obliged. And I thought that maybe if we spend a lot of time with these people, uh, sharing uh, dinner, whatever, and maybe after after two or three weeks, I tell them, well, in fact, you know, I'm a filmmaker and I would, I'd like to film you. Maybe the person would have, would feel obliged to say yes. And that's why it was always, always very important for me to totally in the, in the beginning to say, okay, we're here to make a film. Do you, do you want to be filmed or not? It's not a problem. And, and we're surprised by how many people uh, were okay. And um, and I think it's, of course, because most of them are very lonely and, and they never, and, and it's, uh, it was nice for them to, to spend time with uh, the three of us, you know, uh, who said, uh, yeah, we're, we're glad to, to, to listen to you. And, um, and also from now, I jumped to the end of the, of the, of the shooting. It's, it was also very important for us uh, when we came to the end to, to, to tell them to, to, to come at, at, at longer and longer distance, not so that, uh, so it's not a, a sudden stop, you know, that uh, uh, because, of course, it's, it's, a, it's a change that we come for sometimes uh, we, we shot for one year. Huh? We saw some people, we saw them very often. Some we, we saw just once, but some we, we followed for a long time. And so, uh, yeah, it was important to, to say, OK, it's, it's soon again, we're going to be finished. But the fact that the film is finished doesn't mean that we won't see each other anymore. And so we we kept contact. And but now, of course, the film is. Uh, the, we started 10 years ago, so now I lost the contact with most of them. But um, yeah, and, and the one thing I want to say, because you say the, the, this, the, the, the fact of trusting each other, I always, I really like the, the idea of, of the little prince with the, uh, with, the, with the fox. I, I think he says we have to, on doit s'apprivoiser, I don't know how uh, the, the good word in, in English to, to, to uh, I think the, to tame is probably not the good word. I don't know, how, but how you say to, to yeah, to... Uh, yeah, it's to, to tame is the word that's... To, that's to tame is the good word, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. To tame each other and, 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 the, and, the, and the, the prince or the, the fox, I think, says that when you, when you have tamed the other one, you're responsible of it also. So, uh, so it was very important for us to, yeah, to, to, the, to, to have this respect for the people who, who accepted us in their, in their world. Uh, Can I, may, may I ask a follow-up question? Federico, could you give me permission to ask a follow-up question? Please. Yeah. Um, I, I remember um, in, there was one shot in Ladies of the Wood where you are, where you're speaking to a sex worker 
and she asks you for money, right? Yes. Uh, which, which is agreed ahead of time. And after, for, in the Q&A after that film, we talked about how generally it's not a good practice to offer to pay people to be subjects of a film. But in that case, that was, you know, that was the understanding. And you also want to include the filming of that exchange so that that was part of, you know, that that was understood. Yes. Um, and I, I, I just wonder, you know, how your approach was to the subject of this film, because clearly they, you know, have a lot of, of need. And um, you just mentioned sharing dinner. So what did you do about, did you offer to, 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 you know, pay for dinner for people or what, what was exchanged, if anything, and how did that shape the relationship? Yeah, I, I think well, a very important question, because I, I think that um, uh, I'm not, not sure that they would have liked the fact that we say, OK, we spent that much time. Here's the money. So we try to do it always. But of course, we, we knew that uh, that the people are they are in need of they have a terrorist situation. And so we always try to <clears throat> to bring something without giving the impression of bringing, for example, when we went uh, at Marco's place where the candles are, we said, oh, we brought a pack of beer and some food. Said, oh, OK, let's have a, it's fun, or like something like that. Or, um, of course, the people on the streets, they, they smoke a lot, you know, and so we always had and, and cigarettes are very expensive. So we usually uh, brought uh, a lot of cigarettes and um, and uh, because often they said no 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 I, I don't I don't need it but of course we knew that uh, for them it's 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 a, it's a lot of money and uh, so sometimes I said no I, I'm gonna quit smoking so I don't want them anymore so keep keep them or yeah or, or we bought it for example Wenceslas who we see who puts all the stuff in his tent his tent had the holes so I, uh, if I remember well we brought him a new tent for example or and Jenny who's, who's really nice with her sunglasses, etc. We asked her once, um, uh, what, what, what you need? And she said, oh yeah, I need, a, uh, I need the clothes. And I said, yeah, no problem. We, will, we can find clothes, no problem. What you need? She said, uh, oh, uh, we're jogging pants. I said, yeah, sure, jogging pants. And then she said, hey, but the one with the three stripes, huh? <laughs> so so she, she wanted the... Uh, she had a. She picked her the one she wanted, and of course, of course, we brought her the nice Adidas pants. Uh, don't want to make any advertisement, but that's what she wanted, and and that's how we try to do it. Always to bring to 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 feel what will help, and uh, yeah. And if one said, "Oh, I," but the fact, in fact, money wasn't really an issue. You know, if someone had said. Oh, I, I need five euros to do whatever. I, of course, we've given it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, but the idea, yeah, it's, it's that um, officially in a documentary, you don't pay uh, because uh, but that's, I mean, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a thing of common sense. So, uh, you know, that, uh, yeah, we try, to, we try to be generous, let's say. <laughs> Um, I see, and I'm uh, uh, going to make a, an announcement in this regard that there are already a, a few questions in the Q&A, and we'll get to them uh, very soon. Um, but please, uh, you know, feel free to add questions uh, if you if you have them. Um, before we 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 switch switch to that uh, part of the, the conversation, I wanted to ask you. Um, yeah, to return to the to the to the comment I made in, in opening, the fact that you know you decided to talk uh, about their experiences rather than where they were coming from or where they were going, which seems to be the, the entire focus of the you know the public national yeah. conversation. How did that come about? Was it was it your decision? Was it theirs? Uh, uh, was it also why they they were happy to 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 speak with you because they felt given a chance to address uh, 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 things that are very important to them, their daily yeah. experiences. Uh, well, as I said, this was my first documentary, so I had no experience before that. Um, and in the very beginning, I, I came because I was, I feel embarrassed not to know how to act behind the camera. And so I had questions and I noticed that when I asked questions, the, the answers I got were just answers, you know, and that's not what we wanted. 
And uh, so I didn't want to, so I never tried to really ask questions. I just wanted them to, um, I don't know how you say, uh, Socrates had had a, had a thing in, in in French. It's called le maïoticien. I don't know how you translate it, but le maïoticien. It's it's uh, uh, it's the the uh, la sage femme is the woman who gives birth, and the maïoticien is the man who gives birth. I don't know how you say it in English, the, the maïoticien. But uh, Socrates said that uh, you can give birth to a baby, but also to words, and and that's what I try to do is 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 bring the people to to, to talk by themselves things they maybe not even thought about so that so i didn't really want to ask questions about uh, uh, any question but about uh, there's also another thing is uh, uh, I, I thought that when you ask the people why are you are you on the street uh, why uh, is this isn't that it's it's immediately categorizing them uh, as people who fail somewhere which is, of course, the, the point of view that we have in our society. But uh, uh, when I met Wenceslas, for example, who has a super um, low footprint, the ecological footprint, I think, you know, when he sees me, he doesn't ask, why do you pollute the, the planet so much? You know, and we all have uh, somehow, we all fail in, in, in a way. And I didn't really didn't want to look at them as people who had failed and that, uh, uh, that the, the, my situation as being a citizen who pays taxes and uh, works and et cetera, and has a house and children, et cetera, that this is a normal way. And uh, uh, my idea is I, I often talk about the little prince because it's, uh, uh, that's a little bit the way I wanted to, to make this film. Uh, like I imagine I'm, I'm the little prince who tup, comes on the planet at night, sees people there and the, Streets are empty, so the, I, I, I wanted to take it for granted that these people, these are the people who live there, and that's the way uh, that you live here on the, on this planet. And uh, so there's no idea of uh, of failure or better or worse. Or um, uh, so that's also why I wanted. To, but of course, sometimes when they say it's hard and my situation, etc., it, it, it wasn't a taboo in the film. But I, I didn't really want to bring it up too much. Can, can I just ask one question quickly, taking advantage of the fact that I have a microphone before we turn over to Q and A, and that is, if you could just tell us a little bit about the reception of the film, and um, how people responded to it. Were the the people who were interviewed? Did they see the film, and what was their response? And um, related to that, do you think the film has has had any impact on public policies around homelessness in France? Was it shown to Policymakers, um, or did there was there a public response to it that might have had any kind of impact on on policies? Uh, well, yeah, I, I was well. The, the film, yeah, what was I guess well received. It's uh, it's hard to for me to say, it, but yeah, it was it was well received, and and uh, uh, of course for us it was very important, and that's for each of my my documentaries. It's very important that the the, the persons who are in the film get the chance to see the film. Uh, they are the first ones to see, to see the film, and I remember this. Uh, this uh, we made this first screening of a uh, in a church in Paris in the um, Rue Saint Denis. For the people who know Paris, it's in the center of Paris. It's a church uh, called uh, l'Église Saint Leu, uh, a place where the poor people are welcomed for centuries. It's a place where there there are. Um, uh, food uh, distributions, uh, you know, where, where you can get food, and 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 this place where the where the, whole, the the homeless people were used to going, we we set up a huge, a really huge screen. It was fantastic because uh, Sylvain's images are great, and and around it you have, we had the, the the church and background. It was really beautiful, and it was nice, yeah, to show the 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 film. Then the film there, all of them didn't come to that screening. But I was always, I had a very funny uh, moment once. Uh, I was invited by a, a Paris a cinema in Paris, a theater. Uh, and they said, oh, do you want to talk about the film that day? I said, yeah, sure, I come. Just a regular uh, screening with audience. And I, they were happy to see. Uh, I, I was there for a QA. and a And all of a sudden, I saw Pascal. Pascal is the guy who talks about his daughter uh, on the 14th of July, et cetera, in, his, in this cardboard uh, uh, house. He was in the middle of the of the theater. I said, "Hey, 
Pascal, qu'est-ce que tu fais là? What are you doing here? And, and I was really glad to see him. And he said, yeah, I wanted to see the film. And the audience turned and, 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 and saw that the star of the film was in the, in the theater. And that was really nice. And uh, it gave him, uh, uh, I think he was happy about it. People were happy. So it was a really nice moment. And uh, I, I don't think it changed uh, anything uh, on, on a political level. Uh, you cannot change because uh, uh, to be, yeah, I don't want to go too much into politics, but I think that uh, it's it's not a big concern. It, uh, it's always good to make announcements. So in fact, it's it's maybe good that there are homeless people to make announcements, you know? So if there were no, no homeless people, you cannot make big announcements about this. Macron said at the end of my quinquennat, my mandate, you say mandate, uh, there will be no zero homeless people. It's, 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 it was ridiculous. And we see it now. It's uh, he's at the end of the five years and there is more. So, but uh, what I think maybe the film helped doing is many, many uh, associations, you say the association uh, groups of uh, who help people, uh, of volunteers, that you they made many screenings of the film and, and showed the film to the, to the new people new, to, to introduce them to the world of homeless people. And uh, uh, so I think that, uh, yeah, the film was, was shown very often at that kind of, uh, in that kind of, with that kind of uh, people, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. So Frédéric, maybe we should turn sure. to Q&A. Yeah. Um, I think I, I should read them, right? Because not everyone is able to read the, the questions in the, in the audience. Yes, and we do have a we do have a number of them. So yes, maybe so, reading them and shorting them a bit and yeah. if possible grouping a few together yeah. if they seem similar. Yeah, we will do. Uh, uh, a question from uh, Phyllis uh, Piano. Uh, your, your film shows that each person is an individual with their own reasons for being homeless. And it, it is true, I want to concur that you, you chose a, a diversity, men, uh -huh. women, uh, a French, uh, foreigner, uh, mental health problems, mm, or, definitely, yeah. you know, uh, or apparent absence of them. Um, so uh, did making the film, um, Phyllis asks, uh, give you special insights to possible solutions for this terrible worldwide uh, problem? Well, thank you very much for, for the question. First of all, the diversity was something that really struck me because uh, first of all, when I started making the film, of course I had, uh, I, as I said, I, I, I didn't want to have uh, judgments or whatever, but definitely, of course you always, if you want it or not, you always have uh, a preconceived ideas, idea of things in the, in the uh, so I thought, well, uh, I make a film about homeless people. I will meet many people who are really aggressive against society and they will say, uh, yeah, that they want money or whatever. And it was totally different. And the people were very kind. And what struck me is that, um, in fact, I think the, the diversity of people I met are maybe, maybe, even bigger than among non-homeless people because we tend to have a, some kind of frame to our world, even if we have different uh, jobs, different lives, etc. Uh, we, uh, yeah, we have a bank account, we have a telephone, etc. And I thought that I, I saw that there, all these grids are ways so that people are much more different, and that's what I really uh, that was really struck me. And so, uh, uh, what the solution is? I mean, for me. Uh, as I said, politics is always good if they give something and, and do something. But I think what's really important is to listen to, to the people themselves. It's always, uh, in French, we say, une décision hors sol. I don't know if you say it in English, it's, it's, it's a decision out of the ground that people, the politics who make decisions, they never have talked, uh, they, they don't take the time, they don't, they're not aware of that. And that's a, a, a moment a, a moment I think is interesting in the film because I, I, I wanted, uh, first of all, to uh, not to have exclusively homeless people in the film, uh, but we kept, in fact, the three uh, policemen because I, th I thought that it was really interesting because they're not bad guys. They say, okay, it's cold outside, it's snowing, it's freezing. Uh, at the Mairie du Quatrième, the, the, the city hall of the fourth arrondissement, they open a room, it's heated, there's a soup, you can get a bed with a, uh, uh, a bed, etc. And uh, in fact, when you think about it, say, yeah, of course, definitely, he should go. 
But uh, Costello, he says, I don't want to go. And it's his choice, you know? And what, it takes time to understand why he doesn't want to go. And so for me, the most important thing is on the political side is to take in account what, what these people uh, are saying and listen to them and accept, accept uh, not look at them from above as a child, you know, oh, I know what's good for you, is listen to them. And um, the important thing for us as citizens is just to consider these people uh, as equal citizens. And I think also, if we have, if we want to help, we don't have to feel obliged. But if I if I help, it's not, it's not to say, okay, I'm the helper and you're the helped person. It's just an exchange uh, with your neighbor. He can borrow you or uh, a drill or, or or headphones or whatever. And then, well, okay, you want to help? You want to give him some food, him or her? Uh, but it's but it's not it's, it's not this thing from above that I think is really important. Um. Uh, thank you, uh, Klaus. Uh, I have a, I read Sophie uh, Cunier's uh, question, who was struck by the, the last homeless person in the, in the movie, who sort of acquires, and I believe it's on the, on the poster for the movie, right? He's on the poster for the movie. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Almost mythological dimension. And she thought of uh, allegory of autumn and winter by the Tintoretto. Uh, any reason uh, for uh, that character uh, uh, at the end of the movie? Yeah, I, so I must say that uh, meet uh, Henri, and I don't know if you see it, but he's in a big photo uh, behind me. It's a photo taken by Sylvain. Uh, the meet, uh, meetings, uh, Henri was really something very, very uh, powerful for us all because um, uh, we this. I mean, you don't really understand it in the film, but, but he lives under the Arc de Triomphe. You know, it's really above his head, or used to it because now the town is closed, but when he lived there, above his head, head is the big Napoleon's Arc de Triomphe, this, one of the symbols of French power, La Grande Armée, etc. So being down there in this, and, 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 and in, in this place, which is uh, uh, his room, his toilet, his I mean, bathroom, etc. Et for years and years, it was really um, very, very emotional. And uh, and I thought, well, what I'm living right now is 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 not common. You know, it's 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 a bit more than normal, even more than the other people we met. And and so I thought, really, how will I be able to to convey this to the audience? And I thought we have to to finish the film with him. And Henri, we talk with him, but he doesn't talk much. And uh, so I thought maybe it's better that he doesn't talk at all in the film. And, and um, that's why what I always try to do, but I think especially in this film is uh, starting with uh, trivial, thing, trivial things and uh, et cetera. And the more we move, we move to the, the, to, to the heart of mankind, or I don't know how you, how, how you say, and uh, so we thought that, yeah, that, that uh, um, Henri really uh, leads us to, to, to that. And, uh, and yeah, he looked like exactly like, um, uh, like, like a saint in a, in, a, in a painting. Yeah, like uh, Saint Jerome, I think. Uh, Saint Jerome with a beard and uh, Saint, Saint Jerome, you say, I don't know, yeah with this Bible. And uh, so, yeah, we thought it was important to finish the film with him. Uh... <laughs> I'm gonna, going to merge two questions. Uh, Claudie Bernard and Deborah uh, Brownings uh, asking about men and women, and I guess women, and Deborah is asking about what, what if you know what became of, of uh, Catherine. And I believe that yeah. Catherine is the lady who lost her children, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because uh, about men and women, it's I, I of course, it, it's it's uh, it's always very moving uh, seeing women because it's 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 tough. Huh? I mean, the film is beautiful, but the world, the life on the streets can be can be very very tough, especially for for women. And and uh, yeah, Christine, she was. Uh, uh, I really uh, uh, it was. Also, another very strong um, uh, encounter for me, 
uh, to meet her because uh, I remember Sylvain had phot phot uh, photographed her uh, several times, but she was always like, we see it in the beginning of the film, it's like like he comes out of her egg a little bit, you know, at the beginning of the film. But Sylvain, he always said, uh, I never saw her face. And I talked with people who bring food, uh, food and coffee, and they said, oh, uh, usually she just says, uh, uh, you want coffee? Yes, thank you. Suck and and nothing more. And I said to Sina, yeah, but I really had the feeling that I must go and see her and talk to her. And uh, and Sina said, okay, try, but uh, she she won't she won't talk. And 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 something happened. I don't know if I, maybe I if I somehow physically looked like her son or whatever. But immediately she talked to me, and it was really uh, we had had this 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 great connection. So. Uh, that's why she's also the, the, the starting point of the, of the feature of the fiction I, I wrote uh, and I directed uh, Sous les Etoiles de Paris, uh, which is absolutely not her story, but uh, it's uh, the character of the, of the main character of the film is a bit inspired by, 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 by Christine. And uh, uh, so what, what has become of her? I don't really know. I know that uh, all of a sudden she disappeared after we finished the film. Uh, and I heard that uh, that uh, she moved to uh, her, that her brother, who lives in uh, uh, somewhere in the, in the southwest of France, uh, welcomed her at home, which is uh, pretty nice. Um, another question, you know, staying with the topic of the diversity um, by an anonymous attendee, and it's the one that I also had. Um, if you made a conscious decision to interview predominantly uh, French uh, uh, homeless people rather than foreign born, there's one. Yeah. Uh, and it's true that, you know, uh, uh, when we go to Paris, we see very many uh, 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 foreign born people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. French and or that has to do with the crisis of, uh, of, uh, of uh, l'accueil. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The thing is, uh, two things uh, that we, we shot the film in two, uh, 2012 and 13, so it was a bit before the 2015 big arrival of uh, I don't know how you say it. we say les personnes exilées uh, and people in exile. Yeah, it's, it's it's very political in French. I, I noticed because now I'm filming in Calais. Also, when you say les migrants, migrants, it's you're more against. When you say les personnes exilées. Or a refugee, it's more you know, that you like them. <laughs> so I say the the person exilé. So it was before they they arrived. Uh, so it, it, the world changed a lot, very much uh, since then. That's why when I wrote and directed Sous les Étoiles de Paris and the Stars of Paris, uh, a film that I wrote in between tw uh, uh, 2017, 18, and directed in 19. Of course, then we 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 used this. Uh, uh, this this topic, I mean the the, the subject of uh, and Catherine Fro who plays uh, this homeless woman, she takes care of a little um, exiled boy who lost his mother. Uh, so, but when we felt the au bord du monde, it it wasn't uh, the case. And then uh, there are many, but by then there were already many people from Eastern Europe also on the streets uh, from Poland, etc. And and I wanted to film with them, but. Uh, there was the barrier of the language, and I soon noticed that uh, uh, it's a, it's also a film about speech. For people who who were familiar with with French, it's also very interesting to see the the difference of the difference in the in the level of, uh, for example, Christine. She has a she she speaks excellent French, almost like Marguerite Duras with chosen words, and uh, and so 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 it was really uh, um, uh, also a film. So. Uh, of course, it was uh, it was uh, important for us to have people who who speak French well, and that that's how we that's how we uh, why we chose them. Uh, had I spoken, uh, for example, in in Ladies of the Woods, uh, fortunately I speak a little bit of Spanish, and so uh, there are parts in Spanish which I could understand and respond to. Uh, but uh, yeah, had I spoken Polish, probably the Polish guy would have been in the film. Uh, we have five more minutes. I'm going to summarize uh, three questions by Nolwen uh, Menard. And I guess, you know, the, the second question she asked uh, probably uh, summarizes uh, 
follow-up for questions. What would you say to a, a, a film student that would want to uh, be documentary director? And I guess, you know, to, to expand on this question, what, what is it that you learn making this movie uh, about the art of uh, documentary filmmaking? Well, uh, I think I, it's very hard to give an advice uh, because uh, it really depends what you're looking for. Uh, if, you want, uh, if you want to be a successful uh, documentary filmmaker, yeah, I, I think that now it's, it's a very, uh, people like on Netflix, etc. it's very popular. Uh, people watch a lot of documentaries. And I was, some people, some producers proposed me one recently, but I think I'm, I'm not good at it. You know, it's because it's a way and it's they're perfectly done, but it doesn't, it's not organically what I am as a person. Uh, these documents are always very efficient and, and uh, so you're wow, and it's incredible, etc. So the only thing I can say is, is, is uh, follow your intuition. Uh, it's sometimes uh, uh, a stony path. You say that you know <laughs> uh, when uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult way because uh, when you uh, but uh, for me the, the most important thing the best is is to be uh, faithful, honest. First of all, to yourself, what 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 you want to do and and what what you think is important because it's really in fact it's uh, it, it matters what 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 we're doing, and and I think it's yes to to be. Uh, I don't. I, I hate the world of the word pride, but uh, it's, 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 it's when you watch yourself in the mirror, say, "Okay, what I've what I've done is what I believe is right," and that's uh, that's I think important. And um, then uh, have this vision for yourself and for your work and for the collaboration with other people. And uh, yeah, that's the way I, I want to make things. And uh, but if, yeah, in order but. Some people want to want to, uh, to be successful, and that's also a very good choice. And then I think it's important to know uh, what the 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 the, 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 the codes are. Of, uh, for example, I think if you want to make a film for Netflix, uh, it must be very efficient from the first minute. And and, and if you get, want to get into this world, it's important to to know to master the craft of uh, of this kind of storytelling. Thank you, uh, Klaus. And so perhaps to, to finish, I mean, and I apologize to those who had uh, other questions that won't be asked, but uh, one last question. Could, could you tell us where you're at in this um, uh, promising movie that you, that you referred to and that you're currently making, the one about the, uh, the Calais uh, 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 exiles? Um, yeah, I, I, it's complicated because it, it really connects to what I just said is I'm really, really fortunate to have a producer who's, who says, okay, uh, go and make a film and we'll see. And so I had an idea about, uh, about uh, the film I wanted to make in Calais. Uh, it was because many people who saw my, my film, America, it's, it's, it's released here under the name America. I would have changed the title for a release in the US, um, uh, but uh, it's called America. I apologize for those who, who are friendly. No offense, no. Uh, but um, uh, but yeah, this, this tension during the election, etc. And people in France said to me, "Oh, um, you should do the same film in France. We have the elections in April, uh, and Zemmour and Le Pen and all this." And I, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll go to Calais just to make that kind of film. And I noticed being there that um, it's not possible to make the same film in France because uh, it's less polarized in, in the US. You have the Republicans against the Democrats and it's really two worlds facing each other. And in France, we have so many parties, which is probably not a bad thing, but people say, oh, I don't know, I'm not interested in politics. So that was not the same tension. So being there, I thought probably the film is gonna be something totally different, maybe about the youth, because I met great young people who had no, vision of life etc and meeting exiled people they said oh i have to help and, and and it made their life much more beautiful because now they have a reason and, and they have new friends from from africa etc and it's and other people that just think about surfing surfing uh, there which i think is great i i, I love windsurfing i, I did it also huh? uh, but uh, who don't think about uh, these problems and 
there are very young people in these jungles with they're called jungles. It's not a negative term. They, they, people call it jungles uh, themselves there. So maybe it's, it's going to be a film about youth. I don't really know. And that's why it's, it's impossible to go, as I said, to Netflix and say, I don't really know what I'm going to do. But uh, I have the chance of having, a, uh, yeah, this producer say, okay, let's try, try to make, make a film that's interesting. Not a film that how we thought about it, but what's really happening. And I'm not even sure that uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna make this film if we cannot find the uh, to this afternoon I had a fantastic meeting I'm really happy uh, about another project uh, in a in a mental hospital uh, where I will probably start shooting in a couple of weeks uh, just for a test and maybe we're gonna make a, a film also about uh, a bit same uh, way of making films like Au Bord du Monde and uh, Ladies of the Wood where we just listen to people who are in the mental institution. And it's, it's I think it's going to be really difficult, but really interesting. So it's, it's another, but I think it's, it's not good to talk too much about the future projects because sometimes you, it's not because I don't want to talk about it, but sometimes you, uh, you talk about a film and then finally you skip it and come and people say, Oh, what's about your, film? tell me about your, this is that film. I said, okay, no, 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 I, I won't make it. So you never, it's better to talk about the, finished work than the work to come <laughs> well, well we'll be on, on the lookout for uh whichever of these two projects uh comes out first and i hope shani that uh uh um in person at la maison française de colombia i love it yeah that's, that's, that's exactly that's exactly where i wanted to end to say it. we hope that next time we'll be able to welcome you in person and whichever of these two or any other films that you um, that you finish and would like to present in New York, we would be so happy to welcome you. And um, thank you so much for sharing your time and your thoughts with us about the film. Thank you, Frédéric. Thank you to everyone who joined us. Thank you. It was an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>